Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with Aftar The Last Airbender Book 2 Episode number 3 and 4. Alright, uh, the previous episode, uh, it was a great start to the second season of this uh, show and uh, the first episode really like you know was, uh, what can I say, it was very exciting. It like had a lot of things that we can like you know like think about. The first thing is how people actually like you know not i'm sure not ev each and every people but like, you know few people kind of look at and as the after and not the normal kid that he is and usually people kind of put a lot of expectation expectations on him forgetting the fact that even though he's the avatar he's still a kid and uh like that thing and how like you know he is kind of being treated as just a means to stop everything now i'm not denying the fact that the fire nations need to be stopped definitely they need to be stopped but and i also understand the amount of life that is you know kind of being sacrificed for that how many people are fighting for it and everything but i think like you know putting each and everything on ang is a little bit um what can i say it is a little bit uh, cruel yeah in a way it's it's not good because he's just a kid like imagine like you know you being a kid and suddenly someone starts like you know or the whole world starts uh pointing at you and saying that oh you're like you know you're the avatar you, you'll have to do everything why aren't you stopping this war you have to like you know uh like all these kind of expectations and stuff like damn that's like you know that's not something good i understand everything i understand every like you know the amount of human life that is going like you know that is losing each and every second because of the war but still like that's one thing like that's the biggest thing that we saw in the first episode how like you know ang is basically being kind of treated in a like you know in a way like you know like he like as if he's a weapon but yeah anyways okay that was the first episode the second episode was quite light lighthearted like the whole uh <laughs> what was that the lover's cave i think that was it, it called the whole thing you know like <laughs> katara and ang <laughs> and that was a funny episode so yeah so yeah guys let's get started this is episode number three so uh without further ado let's get started with this episode so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer over here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start this video so all right so here's a countdown three two one go Okay. Hmm. all right okay i should okay i should put this off because i know like someone told me that there are spoilers in the recap in somewhere in second season or the third season i'm not sure but i'm not going to look at it in case i get spoiled or something <clears throat> Return to Omashu. Oh, yeah, uh, the Fire Nation captured. Yeah, oh god, yeah, I forgot about this. Mm, yeah, look at the place. Yeah, we can't be seen. Oh, no. Oh yeah, that's um uh. yeah, like a uh, boomy himself can be in danger, like I don't know, hopefully she's o he's okay. 
<laughs> Whoa, what? Oh yeah, that's why. Okay, there you go. Oh, it's just a sewer system. It's not a secret. Ah, uh, kind of. <laughs> Poor Saka. Close your mouth, Saka. He's just opening his mouth and he's getting in his mouth. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Not for Saka. <laughs> he looks like one of the Pokemons. I forgot. Uh, I think Mark was his name. Yeah. Whoa! What? What the hell? Ugh. Calm down, Saka. Oh my God. Pentapus. <laughs> Oh, you just pat them on their head <laughs> and they become happy and leave you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's just a disease he has. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? God, burn out those. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Small elite team. Oh, great. She herself is pretty strong and now she's getting some friends. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Metal, okay. Oh, whoa, who is this? Me. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. The... Oh boy, yeah. Oh great, we saved them and they are like... <laughs> Whoa! This girl's like a ninja. Kind of. Whoa! Whoa. Okay, that was a uh... oh god. Um yeah. And I think we got captured. Oh no, wait. Oh <laughs> Training, but then. <laughs> Whoa, what the? Funny to the uncle. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the pink aura. What? Show. Wait, is she an acrobat or something? I think so. Okay. What? Okay. Wait, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait. Did he have something in plan or something? Yeah. Yeah, and regroup, you know? Yeah, you're gonna die. You're gonna you're just going to get killed, like that won't help. Yeah, okay. Oh the pen pentapox? <laughs> what? Wait, will that work really? Like I'm just so happy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like zombies, you know? There you go. <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> okay. I think he, he wants to, like, you know, meet, yeah, Boomy. <laughs> it's like a zombie invasion, you know? <laughs> like the pentapox, they're gonna kill <laughs> Whoa, they're even, like, damn, that's some really convincing acting. <laughs> it does sound like a disease, you know? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, nice. <laughs> nah, if you don't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's Momo doing? Okay. Oh, Momo wants food. Oh yeah, he has not been fed, so... Oh! Oh no, oh no! <laughs> um... Oh! Uh, ah! <laughs> Poor Momo! <laughs> Ooh. 
Whoa! Okay, Momo strong. Oh! Okay. Hmm. Oh, that, uh, what was her name? Tai Li. Something like that. I forgot her name. So she. Yeah, she is an acrobat. A gym acrobat. Um. Uh. What the? Whoa, what's wrong with her? Well, I thought she was at least she would be at least good to her friends. She's kind of Okay. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, what the? No. <laughs> hmm. Okay, great. So this was what she was going for. All right. <laughs> what? Come on, Saka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on like yeah circumstances change people not like you know make make people and change people so it's not his fault or her fault that's that's a male or female i don't know son okay yeah he whoa <laughs> that, that. Like, that's a perfect win. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh no! Azula's here! Yo. Oh, she's one of the friends. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Tom Tom, that's his name. <laughs> oh boy. Great. This ah this this became better. Ah, great. Now what? Oh no. 
they going to recognize but i don't think they've ever seen the avatar have they whoa Oh, wow. <laughs> That's boomy. Oh, okay. She's kind of figuring it out now. Oh, no. Yo, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Um Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 what the? Damn, she's Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, nice. Now's not the time, I think. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Oh! Okay. No! I think she's... Wow! Oh god! Oh! Nice! Oh, what happened to Saka? Whoa! The... Pressure point thing, I... Yeah, the oh uh, god. Oh, there you go, Saka. Come on, Appa's here. Let's get out. Ha! Nice. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh. Ah. Oh, nice. There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Okay, the safe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why is he? Jing. Um, so eighty five. 
Oh, really? Oh, like Earth, you know, S still. But then, like, oh, really? Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> oh my god, this guy. Neutral Jing. Hmm. Third target. Ooh, uh, and? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, that's nice. Okay, that's it. All right, that's the end. Okay, another very good episode. I really enjoyed this. And um, so basically what uh, mm, Boomings is saying is that you need someone who has mastered the neutral gene. Who uh, like, you know, sits and listens. So that's the, so I'm guessing that the person who has mastered the neutral gene is the true master of earth bending, most probably. So that's why like Bhumi is like okay you need someone better to teach you or something like that I'm, I'm, i think so that's what he meant most probably so now hopefully like i'm sure like you know like Bhumi will be fine because he seems fine <laughs> like you know <laughs> oh boy so yeah i think it, it will be okay like him being here he'll just be here and as he said like i'll, I'll wait for the right time and uh, yeah okay so this episode here um ang and the crew gets in and we've meet a few new characters mai and tai what was her name just a sec um, just a sec tylee okay tylee and mai these two new characters so these are azula's friend and um she wanted to recruit them now here's one thing one thing i <laughs> i don't know how to feel about this but you know like the way <laughs> azula kind of recruited tylee is but you know uh, now that i think about it um i think you know like it seems as if like he she kind of manipulated her into uh like you know joining her she just did it for herself but if you think about it closely i think it actually seems that it's actually the opposite now like 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 hear me out so here's what he she actually did we can see that when uh, she asked tylee about like how is your performance going no she kind of hesitated she was like yeah it's fine and there was like clouded what can i say like it was kind of cloudy uh what can i say like, she's kind of conf not confused but hesitating at that moment for some kind of reason i'm not sure but maybe she is not as comfortable doing the things that she was doing you know the the kind of the the job she was doing or maybe something else you know she's kind of bothered with so she hesitated and she was like you know when okay here it is like when azula says i'm going to go catch a show tylee kind of uh like you know gets surprised and she says that ah yeah sure of course and now then what happens here actually like when they go to the circus like this the circus is happening azula tries to uh, make the obstacles kind of harder when she says that oh like remove the net and then she says that okay like keep the net and just add it like you know light it in fire then add more harmful creatures like you know big beasts and all to make it more like you know difficult for her now at that moment i kind of thought that oh like what the hell is she doing is is she like this uh like you know unkind to her friends as well 
like it kind of bothered me at that moment and uh, then in the end i also was still bothered by the fact that she kind of did all of this to just rope her in into her group you know to uh, just recruit her and now that i'm thinking about it i feel like the thing that she did was actually correct in a way because uh, Tylee was actually bothered by something when, like, you know, she was performing. And when, like, you know, Azula said that I'm going to, let, like, you know, see you perform. So something must have happened. And she was uncomfortable with something. So, you know, if, if Azula did not do anything, let the, like, you know, circus go on as it is, what would have happened? The thing that would have happened is everything would have gone okay. Azula would, would go on her way and Tylee would have been here still being uncomfortable with whatever she's doing and like you know not happy with her current state i think so what azula actually did is kind of made it a more difficult to actually like you know help her change her mind and actually for her to realize for tylee to realize that yeah this is not for me i want to do something else and she then like you know by the end of it she said that okay like you know you know what like i realized that I'm not going to do this. I'll join you. And you know, Az Azula was like, nice. So like, it seems as if she was very cruel to her friend. It seems. It seems as if she just wanted to get her as a crewmate, uh, as a member, or as a friend, like, you know, as a comrade. So that's why she did these kind of things, kind of manipulated the whole situation, which she kind of did. But still, in my opinion, I'm sure she kind of realized that Azula, uh, Tally was probably something was bothering her and maybe that's why she did that to you know help her change her mind and join her group like it's like killing two birds in one stone it it like you know it, it helps her as well azula as well because she gets more people fighting with her and also it also helps tylee to like you know actually realize that yeah i'm not comfortable with this i'm going to do something else maybe like you know there's sometimes these kind of things happen where you like you know there's this situation where you kind of think about like yeah i'm going to do this this is my calling as she said you know this is my calling and you're very happy with like you know after you choose that path you do everything you do your best but on the way suddenly you realize that oh like i'm not having fun anymore you know like maybe this was not for me maybe i made a mistake but you've gone in in so much that you actually hesitate to back off you know you feel as if like oh my god like i love this thing so much so like you know now i'm not liking this like what is wrong with me like you yourself feel guilty about the decisions that you made and you feel as if like you know like the people who uh what can i say like the people who saw you you know like the people who are like you know what can I say, like in your surroundings, they also have some expectations on you because like, you know, something like that, you know, like you get disturbed by the fact that this was something that I loved, but now I'm not liking it anymore. You feel guilty for yourself and it's very difficult to actually back off at that moment. I think that was probably something that was happening with her. I'm not sure. This is just a speculation. This is just something I thought after seeing that scene. I might be wrong. So sometimes like, you know, the, an external force is required for you to actually bring you back from it and actually help you make decisions. Maybe Azula did that. Like, I don't know. So like, it seemed as if they're really great friends. So I doubt she was, you know, like she did that with any kind of, what can I say, bad intention in her heart. Maybe she really, like, obviously she really did want her in her group, but at the same time, I'm sure she kind of helped her in this way. So I don't know. It's just that the way i thought about this situation let me know what you think all right and that and then the whole <laughs> pentabox situation you know <laughs> and uh, like you know the kid the kid gets <laughs> you know it comes with momo and uh, they get a chance to actually use her like you know the kid as a way to get boomy back and um now here's the thing the whole uh, thing of like you know the, the that the guy said that like she, he looks cute now but like one day he'll, he'll he's going to like you know kill us all now obviously like, like you know like circumstances make a person change a person so if you are you know growing up in a place where fine nation people you know, are your surroundings Obviously, you're going to be like them. 
and it won't change you uh, uh no sorry like you know like you know it will change you sorry and uh, i'm not sure but sometimes there are definitely exceptions people who actually realize that yeah everything like you know that my surrounding people are doing is wrong people like you know there are definitely exceptions like that and they kind of like you know um, deflect from you know like whatever the people that are doing the whatever bad things that the surrounding people are doing they try to deflect from it and go on their own way that happens surely but majority of the time that's not how it goes because you know you're growing up in a surrounding where everyone is like you know everyone is doing something you become like them as you grow up as personality and character is uh, made when from when you are a child your surroundings uh, make you so <clears throat> yeah he's correct in a way after like you know the ending scene where we see ang gave like you know kind of let the child go uh who knows maybe in the future after five or ten years he really will become a person who actually joins the fire army and starts killing people so that will definitely happen but that like you know that does not mean that uh the child is at any fault here the child is what can i say mm, not at fault like he's neutral now so it's kind of interesting you know that the whole thing that bumi was saying that the whole neutral like you know uh what did she say neutral jing or something just a sec i forgot neutral jing yeah neutral jing uh, like you know like sit and observe the child is also kind of neutral now you know so i don't know it's just something that i thought and um like then so now the child the, the in the state the child is he he has not done anything wrong so definitely he should not be like you know blame should not be put on him i'm sure all the people the, the person who actually told uh, katara that yeah this little kid will also turn out to be a cruel person in the future and kill all of us you know join the fire army i'm sure like you know the uh, like you know he also realizes that but still like you know like as he said like our home has been taken away from us like people are at edge now so you know like obviously like they are going to always look at the negative of things and like i'm like you know i'm sure that the person who said that also did not mean that like i'm sure like he also realized that but still you know it's kind of stressed out now like you know king bumi surrendered all these kind of things that are happening they have to leave their house now they don't even know where they're going to go all these kind of stressful situations are kind of like you know affecting them but anyways yeah so yeah th that's what i was saying like the kid is not at fault here now someday he might become a fire nation people person you know join the army kill more people but yeah that's just you know like nothing you can do about it so yeah excuse me okay that was that and then <clears throat> azula also recruits mai with her and like each and like you know, every one of them are very strong and i feel like tyli is going to be a big what can i say uh like one of the biggest obstacles because <laughs> the way she actually stopped katara from using her water bending was insane like you know he, i think he just she kind of like pushed the pressure points or something that you know that you cannot use a water bending something like that so yeah that was insane like ugh, it's game over if something like that happens so yeah and uh, what else okay and then like the whole boomy situation we get to see like you know what boomy actually you know wanted to do why he surrendered all the, the reason we got to know and uh, as as boomy says maybe yeah maybe like you know some day he'll actually realize that yeah this is the ch chance or something I'm, i was waiting for as he said like you know i'm going to sit and observe now and when the time will come i'll know so yeah i'm sure he'll be fine like <laughs> like just look at him so happy <laughs> okay and 
yeah and all these uh new characters that they've joined azula the, she's even more stronger and now they're also going to track down um iro and um, zuko and ang i'm guessing so three targets i really hope that zuko joins ang as soon as possible i think that's going to happen in the future like what else is how else is this story even going to uh, proceed like you know like zuko is being hunted down by his own uh, family so i i think like this is the only path he has left to go like join an i don't know like let's wait and see and uh, what else okay and then in the end ang uh returns tom tom back <laughs> tom tom <laughs> and uh yeah so uh, like you know like one thing we actually realized in the end when we saw their parents like you know tom tom's parents like even though they are fine nation like, you know they are bad people like the children you know they are like the most precious thing to them and that's what makes them human so it's basically like you know perspective like where you stand in everything like you know like they are doing bad stuff they know i'm sure they also know that but like you know for them uh like you know the child is something that is the most precious to them like they they even like you know agreed to return boomy to them so like that's what makes them human in a way so yeah i think so yeah that was it that was the first uh not first sorry the third episode so let's see the next one the next one episode number four of after the last airbender so just a sec so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer over here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started with this episode this is episode number four so here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's take this off and Hmm. <clears throat> so we need to find a new uh, teacher. Uh, okay, chapter four, the swamp. Oh, what is this? Like a village. Oh, it's Iro and Zuko. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, Zuko. Oh my god. Will they? Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. What the hell? Uh, 
Yeah, this is kind of humiliating in a way. Okay, punch him. <laughs> okay, now punch him. <laughs> wow, Iris is great. I, I really love his character. Like, you know, like, it's nothing, like, you know, what can I say? Nothing shakes him or... Okay, anyways, let's see. Whoa, what is... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. By swamp. Whoa! <laughs> oh, the swamp is actually. Yeah, what the? The swamp really wants Ang to land there. Whoa! Okay, okay. Oh no! Oh! Oh my god! Ah! Oh god! Okay, the... Oh yeah. I think Momo will be fine hopefully, but Appa probably... got injured or something. I don't know. Oh god. <laughs> Whoa, that's a huge leech. Oh. God. Yeah, it really was like calling them. Okay, thank god. Appa is okay. Okay, Momo. Yeah, there you go. Nice. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, all right. Oh. Um. Appa. <laughs> nice. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> God. Uh. Oh no, Saka's going to be. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy whoa oh my god that's really oh no <laughs> yeah it also hurt my ears like that's a really shrill shrill sound <laughs> oh calm down sucker <laughs> Swamp gas. Whoa! What? Yo, that really scared me. <laughs> that was a 
God. Um. <laughs> oh God, Saka. Oh boy, this guy. Okay, don't swing your machine. You you'll hurt yourself. Whoa. What what are these things? <laughs> Can't even sleep peacefully here, you know? <laughs> I was like, keep quiet, I'm having a nap here. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, Saka is going to be. <laughs> Saka, you should have been nicer to the swamp. Now the swamp is going to eat you. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> oh no. Oh. There you go. Okay. Hmm. What the? Who are these? Hmm. Oh, damn. Oh, no, that's a crow. Oh. Oh boy, Appa! Oh, what is that? That's not a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What the? Oh no, it's playing tricks on everyone. Oh god. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Saka, you should be nicer to the swamp. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh that's yeah, everyone's like like hallucinating about their loved ones, I think. Okay. Oh boy, yeah, it is playing tricks on Oh god! Yo! The sound effects are like... <laughs> okay, what will Aang see? Okay. Hmm. Oh no. 
Oh, those guys, yeah. I'm guessing these are like natives to this place or something. Yeah. What? Oh boy. Like, they're trying to eat Appa. Appa's going to eat them. Like, this is so huge. <laughs> yeah, they understand. Whoa, what the? Oh, are they waterbenders? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh! Okay, that really is Katara. Oh god. That really is Katara. Okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> like mm. so what about Ang? who is that person that yeah she, he doesn't even know Oh. Oh, that's a huge, huge tree. But you're here. Oh boy, what the? <laughs> what is that? Whoa, it's a tree monster. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, boy. Okay. There you go, there's plenty of water here. Oh, wow, that was cool. Oh. Hmm. Oh boy, it's absorbing him or something. Wait, was that Momo? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Oh, Momo. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. All right, there you go. Boy, this thing is dangerous. Okay, maybe break the mask or something. I don't know. Maybe that will do something.
Oh, there is someone inside. What the hell? Oh, is this some form of art bending or something? Oh, there you go. The mask. Oh, no. Why? What the hell are you doing this for? Why? You are trying to kill us. What the hell? Oh, okay. That's why. Saka. Oh boy. Hmm, there you go. Oh, that's a banyan group? Okay. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Wow. Well. But what about Ang? Oh, okay. Yeah. Or oh, maybe in one of his past lives. Yeah, maybe one of his... Or maybe your past life. Okay, maybe in the future as well. Oh, wow, there you go. It's kind of like, you know, like he's kind of earthbending in a way. He's, he's learning the basics, I think, this way. Oh, boy. Then who are these people who are actually, you know? Um... Cat getters, those are cat getters? Oh boy! God! Okay, these are waterbenders, okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they know him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All slim? What? Oh no, slim <laughs> Oh, really? Okay, they did not. Okay. Hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, those are. Oh!
<laughs> Half duster. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. Oh no, is this Zuko? No, who is, is this Zuko? Wait a minute, who is that? I thought, at the beginning I thought it was Zuko, but I don't know, maybe someone else. You know, because Zuko kind of got mad at the whole situation but i don't think zuko will do something like this like just because of a grudge you know um like if zuko had to do something he would have done it on that spot like not like this i don't know who knows maybe maybe it is zuko like, let's wait for it all right anyways okay okay wait a minute oh yeah that, that i think that is zuko because of the mask you know like i think he wore this mask before for, uh, when he saved Dan. I might be wrong, but yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> okay, so this episode. Uh, the beginning, we see how um, Iroh and Zuko are actually doing, you know, here. And, and the one thing I really like about Iroh is like, it's, it's like basically nothing really uh, bothers him. Like, you know, he, he's just, uh, what can I say? Like, you know, he's happy with anything. And nothing really, you know, is able to change him. In a way, like whatever he thinks is the best, he believes it, and I don't know. He, he's very calm and very what can I say? You know, like like uh, like like nothing really affects him. Yeah, affects him. So like you know, like this guy was making fun of him, and like, you know, saying so much like insulting stuff, and he was like, ah oh, yeah, got got money. <laughs> you know all well and good and yeah but that really was kind of insulting you know when the guy actually started swinging the weapon and saying that ha huh, like old man dancing for a meal like that was really insulting like zuko like was rightfully very mad but Iro was like ha huh, nothing no problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay that that really like is impressive you know like people need a lot of what can i say like discipline uh, self control and you know like a lot of things to actually reach the state that iroh is in and like what can i say like you know like rightfully he is one of the best uh you know firebenders so yeah all right okay then we get to the uh, men's main section of the swamp actually you know attracting them and uh, the whole like you know tornado thing that they said like it was neither them nor like you know but saka kind of dismissed it and said that ah there was just weather but <laughs> in the end we kind of saw the, the swamp really is alive in a way like <laughs> the, the bird was screeching at the top of its lungs and the swamp was like <laughs> shut up <laughs> and wax it away <laughs> all right okay so yeah the swamp we get in the swamp and <clears throat> Like they get separated, and this is a, there was a few few portions in this episode which really kind of <laughs> you know like what can I say really startled me. The the whole the section with when the bird suddenly started screeching at the top of its lungs like a human being and like that was kind of <laughs> like, uh, and the whole like you know section where you suddenly pops up behind uh, Saka and uh, yeah okay so here we see that the people that each and every one of them saw uh katara saw her mom and mm, what's his name saka saka saw ua and ang saw some girl little girl i think that was like a, that was a kid i think And uh, just a sec, let me just Was that a kid or um 
Yeah, I think that that's like a kid, little kid. Anyways, okay. So yeah, uh, saw him, saw her, and uh, like you know, the kind of running around and all. And now one thing that I thought, like they kind of explained it, that it's someone that they uh, hold close to their heart and love. Uh, for Katar, it was her mom. For um, yeah, for Saka, it was Yue, and for Ang, this unknown person. Now, as they said, like you know, as the guy said that this this thing transcends time. So like, you know, mystical stuff happens here. So basically, so what he meant now, I like you know, I thought this was, I thought it was like the, the little girl that they saw was someone uh, who Ang met probably in one of his past lives. No, as they say, like, you know, it transcends time. But the thing that the guy said is that it's not actually the past, maybe the future. So, like, you know, like, that can happen in a way if you think about it. Like, you know, like, maybe in the future, there will be someone who, like, you know, Ang will meet like this, this, this little girl. So, like, we'll have to wait for that, obviously. I'm sure, like, we'll meet this person. Uh, in the upcoming episodes somewhere down the line but uh, yeah and okay so all right so then these people were i'm guessing native to this place like live here these are waterbenders now so these people basically had no connection to the outside world that means like they they always and as they said like you know like they said that we thought that the waterbenders only lived here and like so that means they have no idea what's happening outside now i wonder do they even know that a whole war is going on like i don't know like it won't actually like you know surprise me if like you know if like you know if someone asks them that do you know that the fire nation has actually attacked us and everyone is at war and they are like what like that's new like you know we did not know that like if something like that happens i won't be surprised because they seem really like you know isolated from everything they just live here, have, like, you know, like, do normal stuff and get food from here as well. Yeah, and that's how they live their life. <clears throat> and, uh, okay. And then uh, the tree thing, the tree that was being controlled by this guy, he uh you know like it starts like you know attacking Yang. now obviously like i could i realized in the end that it was actually he thought that um they were actually trying to harm the swamp like saka had a huge weapon in his hand and he got freaked out at that and he thought that yeah they're probably trying to harm us but yeah like by the end of it like the uh confusion was cleared out and now one thing i need to check out <coughs> Mm. Okay, the banyan tree. Just a sec. Uh, okay. All right, the banyan tree. I, I kind of checked it out. Like I know this, but obviously, like it, I still like double checked it. Um, like he said that I uh, reached enlightenment under this banyan tree it's like buddha isn't it you know like reaching enlightenment under the banyan tree i think like it kind of like it seemed like that but obviously he's not buddha but like it kind of like you know like like the same thing that happened with buddha he like you know sat under the banyan tree uh, like reached enlightenment and he also says that he reached enlightenment under this banyan tree. I don't know, like that's just something that I noticed. So yeah, and it was like a huge tree, like that was really and like the thing that he said was really interesting. That he says that like everything is like one, you know, like everything is living, and like you know even the earth is a single entity, and <coughs> and we are all branches roots like you know our now our roots are the same we are like branches of the earth as a whole 
and uh, I've, I've heard like you know this type of uh, like you know a lot of people kind of I kind of heard people saying this and not I, I can't remember where but in a few places I've heard that like you know they kind of refer to earth as a whole and like you know all life as a whole like one thing we're just like you know actually we're just branches of a single entity and like this type of a thought process and uh, it's really interesting the way he explained it and that's why that kind of really makes sense in a way when you see that when the thing that ang does later on is he kind of you know sits down uh, and like focuses and he actually realizes where momo and appa are because like you know they're 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 part of the same thing as as he said like you know like the roots kind of go to the same place so everything is connected in a way so he like you know was able to actually track down uh, appa and momo just by focusing and uh, you know like i'm guessing like these are these are going to all of these things are going to be the basics of earth bending that he's going to learn later on like you know this this seems like a form of earth bending i think i'm not sure but kind of in a way so yeah like like you know like he's learning as time passes now hopefully like you know he'll, he'll make a a teacher an earth bender teacher sooner and uh, you know like all of these will really help him in that moment mm, yeah but okay what else okay and then like you know that happened I, I, did i miss something i'm just like you know kind of double checking mm, no i don't think so i think that was it yeah and then in the end we get the little scene where that guy you know with the weapon, the, the dual swords, you know, like he got gets beaten by someone under a mask, and I think that that mask is the same mask that Zuko used. I think in when you know, in season one when he saved Ang, I might be wrong, like you know, like, but I think that is it, and I'm not like that kind of, you know, I don't know, like that kind of, what do you call it? Mm, oh, I'm not finding the word like that that kind of makes it feel as if the show is telling us that oh this is Zuko under it but who knows maybe it's someone else because I, I I'm still not sure because Zuko I don't think Zuko will be like this you know like he after like you know at the middle of, of the night he comes and like you know defeats that guy if he really had some problem with him and you know like really did wanted to like you know teach him a lesson he would have just like stand stood up there and just smacked him in the head and like you know like like what do you say like uh do everything in front of him without like you know like this like you know in the middle of the night i don't think he would be like this but who knows like i might be wrong so yeah anyway so yeah guys that was it that was my reaction to episode number um four of after the last airbender so if you guys enjoyed my reaction be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed Comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know. I'll check them out. So, yeah, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of After the Last Airbender. So, until then, goodbye and have a nice day.